he did that. But his the lineup with Case and Wallace, uh, Antonio Reeves, C. C. J. Frederick having shooters on the side, then Jacob Toppin and Oscar Sheboy is his most effective lineup for toughness, for rebounding, for getting shots up. Kentucky doesn't need to make nine, ten threes a game. They can make five a game and just out muscle you. Uh, Case and Wallace, hey, he had, he had a goose egg right. uh, last game, by the way. Just wait till he gets back his, to his rhythm. He's healthy. Hopefully, uh, those back spasms that were persisting uh, with him uh, are, are going so he can come out. But um, I'm buying Kentucky right now after facing so much adversity to, to make a great run here to finish the season. How much are you buying Georgia? Oh, I'm buying them. Here's why I would be nervous, Patrick, uh, Young, if I'm uh, the Kentucky Wildcats. Georgia has in Terry Roberts one of the better ball screen players in the SEC. Go. What did we see that hurt uh, 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 Kentucky against South Carolina? Was that high ball screen? What is Kentucky going to do? How are they going to help Oscar in that high ball screen? We've talked about it for a week and a half, it feels like. They I think that's going to be key is how Kentucky defends Terry Roberts, that high ball. He's really good at that. Yeah, this this Georgia team sitting at 3-1 at and one in league play. 25 SEC games before this four-game stretch this season, 3-22 and 22 in league play. I mean, it has been a turnaround. Kerry Oquindo obviously back. Terry Roberts comes over, and Mike White's got it. I take Keontae away from the basket when the big guy's on him, post him when the medium-sized guys are on him. Somehow there's a good chance Kansas is going to get a good shot here. Under three and a half to go. John Shelby, Brad for Schiller, Chris Butt, Brady Dick with the basketball. And now Harris. Well, they tried to sneak the lob in. Got a foul on K-State. Well, they ran a play that ends up with a lob. And Grady Dick is the screener. And the good news for Kansas is when his man helps, he's open at the top of the key. Then he's fouled. Kansas just 14 of 23 from the Hey, that's deep. This guy, obviously, a good free throw shooter. Came in shooting 79% from the strike. Grew up right down the road in Wichita. Sunrise Christian Academy. And Tied at 67. Desi Sills handling with Yesifu on him. How about Marquise Noel averaging 25 points in Big 12 play? That's a block. Tom Lamb, and he lays it in. Mm -hmm. Self on a charge, looks like a block. But gotta give the officials credit. They've let a lot of contact go both ways. Saquon Tomlin with the deuce. And it's a two-point advantage. Adams inside, and they get the foul. Watch Daquan Tomlin now. He's got the ISO. You see the attention to Johnson. That should be one or the other, but give, give these guys credit. That's a block, I think. I think he's lucky it wasn't a charge with yeah. the way the, the left arm exactly. pushed out like that. But well, there's been a lot of contact tonight. Oh, this has been a physical yeah, one, no and, doubt. And, and you know what? You can complain about these guys, and there will be our game to officiate overall. I think both coaches are good. Johnson was just urging on the student section, telling them, get louder. Well, Desi Sills, with 19, John, he's been able to get downhill all night. And again, Johnson guarded by the bigger Wilson. I like this right here out on the court, where he can use his quickness, right there. There's those hands by Dickie. Brady Dick is unbelievable. Dick inside, it wouldn't fall. But he'll go to the line and shoot two. Brady he, Dick. He's done this all year, John. And Bill Self loves this. Watch. Just swipes at it. They're so good at swiping at drives. And Brady Dick right there with a big steal. Those active hands that we talked. 
Coach Self about it. Remember, hand placement. still has 16 points and as well he has seven rebounds Jerome Tang's got three timeouts left and uh, gonna save him Noel shot clock under 10 Sills with the bigger Adams on him gets him in the air and draws the foul Sills will go to the line. And I believe that's number five on KJ Adams. It is. He's done. And that's a nice third option to have. Take a look. A little head fake by Sills, and then he gets KJ Adams reaching in. So with Wilson on Keontae Johnson and Noel bottled up by Harris, Jerome Tang goes to Desi Sills in a smart play. And this is one of those spots as Zach Clements is going to check in, but McCullers fouled out. Now Adams is fouled out. Bill Self has not been playing really more than seven. I mean, Clements gets a little bit of time. Edgefort gets a little bit of time, but it's been this, the main seven guys. So there's only 12 teams in the country that have a shorter bench than Kansas, and that's a great point, John. Coming up next, Georgia and Kentucky in the SEC. That is going to begin on ESPN News. Sills ties it up. <clears throat> so this one has been as advertised. Number 13 against number two. I know this. I'm impressed with K-State. They are for real. Absolutely. Hey. Hey. It's pretty hard to argue against the league being any better than this one. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not. Trying to get that mismatch. Clements. Clements inside. Lost the handle, Noel. Two on one. Noel left hand. And he spun it home. <clears throat> I, I know Zach put my name. <laughs> I know Zach put my name. You're crazy. Bus. For Georgia in 17 tries. It's airing right now, first minute and a half on ESPN News. When they're done in Manhattan, it'll be on ESPN. Fellas. Yeah, Zubin, stick with us here at Bramlage, and then we'll bring you the SEC. Number two, Kansas, down by two, 114 to go against number 13, Kansas State. Noel on Grady Dix, 5'8 versus 6'8. He's had it for a lot of the game. There it is. We'll switch. Wilson. And Jalen Wilson gets fouled. Back at the other end, Marquise Noel. The there. steal, and here he comes. Yeah, I'm gonna want, we're going to we're going to show two looks at this. Watch DeJuan Harris reach for the steal, and watch Noel just lift the ball just a little bit in order to get by that 6'6 reach back. the way out of a timeout downhill drive yep. running game Wilson to Jalen Wilson with 30 it's three off his career high under a minute to go tight at 72 there's a really good chance with a stop that Kansas will get the last possession Johnson inside, rolls off, tip wouldn't go, Johnson the rebound, Noel for the lead, loose ball, out of bounds, here we go, now 
they should wow. take a peek at this. They probably got it right, but there was so much commotion on the floor. Obviously, under two minutes, they'll go to the monitor. Boy, Marquise Noel had as wide open a shot as he'll have all year. Let's see. Grady Dick does not touch it. Nope. So it's going to be Kansas ball. This will probably won't take long. Bill mm. Self's got a free timeout right now. <clears throat> Jerry Miller to the left. Mm. And Jared to the right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jamie Lucky in the background. Tied at 72. Kansas State has led most of the way. Their largest lead, 14. Okay, so here's what you got, John. Unless you get a wide open layup, if you're Kansas, you are going to try to shoot this ball with five or four with a chance for a tip in and get the offensive rebound. More than likely, as Bill Self is surveying this in the puddle, he's looking for a way to get Jalen Wilson downhill. Now, Looks like Clements out, Etchafor in for the screening and the offensive rebounding. He's got to be careful he doesn't go over the back. They're still looking at this. Might be a timing also. So it's Noel, and it's Kansas basketball. Yesifu out there who can shoot it. Etcher four can screen, Grady Dick can shoot it, and Dewan Harris, who's already got double figure assists tonight, hmm. is going to have the ball in his hands down the stretch. They're on their feet here at Bramlage. That's why you go early for that tank, extra possession. Instructions to his defense. As I said early, John, we've seen it so many times, so many years. Kansas is built for this. <clears throat> Uh, uh, uh. It'll be in the hands of Jawan Harris. See if they try and find Jalen Wilson. Clock at 10. Game over. Now I stop playing with him. ago his team was winning and he started screaming at his coaches and I asked him today why were you screaming he said because my coaches were showing no joy and I told them what did he say fix your face fix your face <laughs> Yo. and, and the point was this is college basketball we love coaching these guys let's embrace this and we're going to embrace five more minutes fix your face Freddy fix to remember your that all face. year 
Franklin wins the tip. Noel and Kansas State have control. Kansas without Adams and McCuller, who have both fouled out. Noel trying to turn the corner as they move the ball nicely. Sills. And they get the block on Grady Dick, even though Edge of Four rejected it cleanly. Third on Grady Dick. Great, great ball movement, and Desi Sills has had a terrific night. Just attacking the basket. He's hit, a, he's hit a three, but he is a downhill driver. And, John, this is the ultimate, what we talked about. Jump shots not going. Get to the hole. That's one. Hey. Seals rattles it home. Edgefor sits and... Clements checking back in. Sills two free throws, and K-State has the lead. Remember now, Noel's got four. He's got to be judicious with his defense. Mm -hmm. Wilson with Johnson on him. Shot clock under 10. Clements inside. And he puts it home. Good catch by Zach Clements. Coming off the bench late. They got an open court. Uh, Jerome Tang is yeah, frustrated because they stopped the play. And they had numbers. Yes. And by rule, now, the officials will disagree with me. But when the offensive team has the ball away from an injured player, you don't have to stop the clock unless the injured player is in harm's way. Let's watch now. There's the basket. Okay? Jalen Wilson falls. He's limping. Yeah, the yeah, ball's yeah. in and in. I could be wrong, John, but I don't think they're supposed to stop that. Only when a player is in harm's way, and I think Jerome Tang has an argument. Yeah, he was high-stepping could not believe it. Tied at 74. Nice pass. Johnson finding Tomlin, and Tomlin gets fouled. They call it Tomlin, part of the group of the Yorkers on this K-State team with Noel and Tyke Green. And, of course, Ish Masood. Let's keep in mind, John, Kansas is 4-1. and one. Five games. Four of them have gone down to the final possession. Able to knock it down. It's a one point Kansas State advantage. And they lead it by two. Taylor Wilson leading the score. And one. How good is he? Everybody in Bramlage Coliseum knows that he is going to drive to an open post with his right hand. Take a look. By design, this is not an accident. Bill Self did this with Josh Jackson, with Andrew Wiggins, with Ochai Abaji. When I said to start the game, John, that Bill Self is good for three to five baskets a game. That's exactly what I mean right there. Wilson has matched his career high with 33, and he's giving Kansas the lead. Oh, hey. Sills, oh, smack of the other end, gets a piece of the paint. Don't oh, quit me. I'm a seven of lucky. Don't quit me. They <laughs> stayed led by as many as 14 in this one. Noel, kick out, good hands, Grady Dick. Seven on the shot clock. Kansas State basketball. That's a good, I, you know, I'm surprised, you, there it is, that's a good timeout right there. That's why you save your timeouts. Timeout on the court, 326 to go. Here in overtime, John Shabby, Fran Frischel, and Chris Button. Kansas has won the last seven meetings between these two teams. 
Let's see where they go here. Yep, got plenty of time, but it's got to come in cleanly. Seven on the shot clock. Kansas by a point. They get it to Johnson. Bill Self shouting, help him. Kick out Sills. And a foul on the floor. And they get Grady Dick, and that's his fourth. Good recognition by Johnson. They were kind of, we call it digging. It's not a double team. They were all digging on the post. He recognized the kick out. Of course, Sills has been tremendous tonight at driving those closeouts. <laughs> Just heard Bill Self say it. He said to Grady Dick, you take five, meaning Carter. Cam Carter yep. and Dewan Harris. The next time they go down at this end, he'll have Sills. Do do. K State <clears throat> with a one point lead. Now the crowd back at it. Harris, Brady did mm. catch and shoot. Yo, who is this guy? He's a every rebound. Kansas State with the ball. Up by a point. Grady Dick. Nice more. Just one for eight from three. And Kansas as a team, five for 26. Noel weaving. Carter hangs. Can't hit. Okay, I'm going to keep the move. Keep the move on the paper. You bugging. That's a three. Oh. 36 for Jalen Wilson, and they're up by two. A new career high for him. Vintage. This nigga has 36. Never a moment he will not take the big shot for this team. Never. Okay. Oh, oh, whoa, chill, buddy. It's overtime. Lemons kicked out on Tomlin and now Sills. Hey, Sills inside. The shot wouldn't go. Loose oh. ball. Tomlin has oh. <laughs> oh. He thought he was throwing it to Noel, and he threw it right to Harris. All right, face up. Same shit. Don't let nobody get out of your eyes, bro. Oh. All right, get back on D. Pulls watch him, watch him. Hey. Johnson inside draws the foul. Let's see who it's on. I think it's on Grady Dick. He never got back in front. Again, Johnson playing downhill in transition. Defense not set. And this crowd will say bye-bye to Grady Dick. Oh, broken hip. 
So Grady Dick picks up his fifth foul, and he joins McCuller and Adams on the Jayhawks bench as three have fouled out for Bill Self's team. Bobby Pettiford's going to check in for Kansas. John, you know, there's three guys I think are leading candidates for National Player of the Year. Jalen <laughs> Wilson, Drew Timmy, and Thanks Zach for the concern, Eadie. mother. And I think Zach Eadie's the front row. But Jalen Wilson is playing at an All-American level, mm. and he's done it the whole year. Turners. match yeah. right remember rocky a long time ago apollo creed when he said ain't gonna be no rematch there's gonna be a rematch yeah, there is. but more importantly kansas is number two in the country they're the defending national champions and there's a long way for kansas state to go to catch them obviously but don't you love what jerome tang has brought to this university and the fact that now there's another quality big 12 team that's making noise like this. What a game. What a battle between two terrific teams. As if there weren't enough quality Big 12 <laughs> teams, right? Deontay fun. Johnson, the Florida transfer, quite a story. Prior to this year, he hadn't played since that collapse on court, that medical emergency, December 12th of 2020. You know, I thought two years ago when the Iowa State job opened up that Jerome Tang would be a perfect candidate. And obviously they made a great choice in T.J. Otzelberger. Credit Gene Taylor and Kansas State for making this hire. Under 90 seconds to go, the ball in Bobby Pettiford's hands. Wilson, left hand, and he's fouled. Oh, I gotta boy. tell you, they got that on Tomlin. I have to tell you this. I don't understand why Daquan Tomlin and anybody else guarding Jalen Wilson will even let him get to his right hand. When he catches the ball on the perimeter, you force him back to the middle. Now, he can drive to his left hand, but he goes about 60 miles an hour compared to 85. <laughs> you can't guard him downhill right-handed. Tomlin is fouled out. 15 points, 10 rebounds. That's going to be a problem. Uh, yeah. Nobody now with any length to guard... Jalen Wilson. Tomlin certainly making an impact. And Jerome Tang talking about Naquan Tomlin is one of the more talented players he's ever coached. A lot of upside there. Yeah, no question. Especially for a kid who did not play high school basketball in New York. Yeah, he is. He doesn't need a technical now, and I don't yeah. think they'll give it to him. Jerry Pollard saying... Well, you got to fight for your team. Yep. This game, by the way, has featured 48 fouls and 63 free throw attempts. Mm -hmm. Number 64, Wilson for the lead, and he gets it. Body bigger. This young man committed to John Beeline at Michigan. And when John went to the NBA, he Did jumped on his favorite team that he followed when he was a kid. He's got 38 points. And yeah, the kid from Dent, Texas, putting on quite a show here tonight. Again, you've got to drive it downhill unless you get a wide open three. And you know Marquise's Noel is due. Watch out! Almost got it. He's going to the foul. Oh, I thought he had a steal. 
Almost. That'll be number two on Wilson. And Noel threw the one-hand pass, and you see him reach across the top, and he almost had it. But that was a very lackluster pass by Marquise. Yo. <clears throat> this game is How crazy. Is this? Yeah, it's been great. Keontae Johnson at the line. He's perfect. Seven out of seven. Ooh. Well, James. teams have been jinxed tonight. So mean. Oh my gosh. All right, one point game, 106 to go. What are the odds it's on? Jalen Wilson's gonna have the ball. Pretty good. <laughs> he wants that too. Good luck. What happened? What? Yo! That's the 40 burger, Bill, man. You can't like stop that. That was the end of the game. This season, right Whoop. And he doesn't make any, but he's got a guy with 38 points who's lining up a three. And that time, no turn of his that game. time, the Hall of Famer probably wishes he had that one back. Oh. But it probably... <laughs> 82-81. Alright, low clock now, so something's got to develop quickly. Now they may be looking at when Self called the timeout. The coach can call the timeout for this from the sideline. Yeah, they're checking on what the time should be with the timeout. Watch Bill Self right there. He's reaching for the timeout. Jerry Pollard sees it. He blows the whistle before Jalen yep. Wilson shoots. 41 8. The timeout could have lost them the game. Now, if you're Kansas State, low key, they could have lost the game off of that timeout. That you can get a yeah, it's crazy. Go Team suck. Tank, do you call a timeout? Game. He's got two left. I say, and there's no word. Rebound, no it's word. in the hands of Noel Johnson, Sills. Let them play in the open court. But they must get the stop first. So it's 42 2 on the game clock, 5 on the shot clock. Pettiford to inbound. Crazy. Pettiford looking for help. Finds Wilson. Step back. Ooh. I would push it. But Joe Tank says no. Time out. Timeout, Kansas State. What was good about that, John, is Kansas got everybody back quickly on the miss. And there really wasn't any room yeah. to attack. And Jerome Tang recognized it. He's going to get it. That's how I was saying. Don't even, don't even oh, let him get it. Here in Manhattan. Oh, does he have seven rebounds? Number two and number 13. Can I play psychologist here? Yeah, Yo. Go. I think if you get a chance to drive it with Johnson, Given that the game ended on what I think was a no call, but the crowd didn't, I think you attack the basket. Johnson can score without a foul, but he also puts pressure on everybody in the building, including the three officials, to make a call if there's contact. May not happen that way, but I would be thinking downhill drive from Johnson. Here's the crazy thing. The way Marquise Noel has played tonight, and he hasn't played great offensively, he's probably the guy that ends up hitting the three. Noel, yeah. averaging 25 yeah, points right, he's in, right. in Big 12 play, he scored just four, does have six assists. The story tonight, though, has been Kansas's Jalen Wilson, 38 points, a career high. And Kansas on the road coming back from a 14-point deficit. But one thing's for sure, this K-State team is a handful. Yes, they are. What an amazing job. In late March, 
the first practice Jerome Tang had, he had two players, Ish Masood and the little guy, two kids from Harlem, New York. And did he put together a club that's pretty good? Yeah, I said, you know, is it easier because you have an older team, and they are older. He said old, but the right guys. Yep. Said he can put his head on the pillow at night with these guys. Here's Noel. Oh, on your dome piece, boys. Uh, yo. <laughs> Inside, gotta see it. Bro, they still have it, and Bill Self's gonna take the timeout. 11.7 to go. Whoo! Well, you know, an alley you yes. jump. This Great is crazy. Action. Well, you know that Johnson's gonna be denied on the wing, right? Watch Wilson step out, and that gives Keontae just enough time to slip by him, and it's a great pass. Great look right there out of the timeout. That's where you put the team defense and, and use their pressure against them. Noel with the perfect feed. And the Wildcats lead it by a point. All right. Got to get in cleanly. <laughs> you can't bow. And Wilson's going to likely get it. Yep. This game is and somebody sick. else on Kansas. I if there's right. a double or what we call a dig, which is not really a double, it's we foot fake in the lane and back out. Somebody else has to be ready to shoot. It. Two, Kansas without Brady Dig, bro. without Kevin McCullough, without KJ Adams, all three guys have fouled out of this one. The and yet team. despite that, Kansas with the ball. And down the point, Jalen Wilson, a career high 38. And here we go, the Grammys. Remember, John, Bill Self's pretty good in close games. 6 and 0 this season, and games decided by. Yeah, my son needs 49. He about to get in the lane. Yeah. He's going in white, boy. They want him to win the game and touch it. Two. Ten. Sills is on Wilson. Eight. Two. Five. Harris. Four. Harris Three. Two. Zero. I told him. I told him. I told him. It's a blessing to be here. Like, 
The state wins it in overtime, 83-82, and they knock off number two, Kansas. Up next, college basketball continues. It's Georgia taking on Kentucky. For Frank Priscilla, Chris Martin, our entire outstanding crew, I'm John Chomby. Thanks so much for watching. Time to send you to Lexington. Carl Ravitch, take it away. Thank you very much. So Mike White's former player, Keontae Johnson, continues just a remarkable comeback from that medical emergency a few years ago. 20-plus points again for him and a huge upset win for Kansas State at home over Kansas. Kentucky and Kansas will meet in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Rabbi, I grew up in Topeka, Kansas. That KUK State rivalry it's not one of the top four or five in college ball, but it's somewhere in that six or seven range. Sure. And watching that thing tonight, the intensity was hot. So we welcome you to Rupp Arena and a foul against Kentucky. The elbow there from Adu Fierro. Story of our game so far has been Georgia's backcourt. They've been outstanding. Terry Roberts looks like a future pro. He's a freshman. He wears zero in red. He's been outstanding. Yeah, freshman. And Mike White's first year at Georgia has been a success. 13-4, and 3-1 and in conference. Kentucky, the wild week. A week ago, they lose on their home floor to South Carolina. Then Saturday, they go on the road and knock off a top five Tennessee team. And now the question is, what will Kentucky do tonight? And Severe Wheeler came off the bench. He checked in about four or five minutes in, flipped the game a little bit, then had a couple of mistakes. The key against Georgia, you're going to talk about it all night long, we will. Can you stay in front of the ball for Kentucky? These Georgia guards are nice. tremendous at going to and the ball. Try to stay in front of them, but Cario Oquindo is there to throw it in off the window. This kid is one of the most explosive athletes in the SEC. Nice. He it a little I bit love it. I love it. Such a big, strong yeah. ball right through the chest of Reeves. Man, if you can't guard the ball, you're in trouble tonight if you're Kentucky because Georgia also has enough three-point shooters. You have to honest guard. He can't sink in the gaps. And defending that basketball is item number one right now for John Calipari. Georgia has made 34 of their last 36 free throws overall. And a window misses. So you jinxing it. Stop doing Slow that shit. A wee bit. Hey, Rabbi, let's talk about Georgia's defense. One of the top ten in the country defending the three-point line at 24%. They chase you off the line. They make you bounce it. Kentucky can get no separation early in this game at the three-point line. Single coverage on Shibwe. Goes to his left. Lays it up and lays it in over the rim. Oscar Shibwe has now got nine with eight yeah, rebounds. Cool next time. Single coverage on Shibwe. So Mike White is saying, I'm not going to come off and double team and allow your three-point shooters to get going. Yeah, Roberts dumps it down low. And yes, they are going to get Fierro. It looked like he got him on the arm. And a new Fierro picks up two quick fouls. So why do you not double team Oscar Shibwe? You're going to make him work for his points. He has struggled at times with length. But what you're doing if you're Georgia right now, you're not allowing Shibway to pass the ball out to the three-point shooting, and you're allowing your perimeter guys, Ravi, to stay attached and battle Kentucky on the glass. If you <laughs> don't, don't even team, block that. Your defense is in a rotation. Therefore, Kentucky can really do damage on the offensive glass. I like the strategy by Mike White early. Facts, bro. Like, leave it alone. First free throw, good. This is a team primarily built out of the portal. When Mike White took Yay. over Georgia, Jimmy, he, he went... And he acquired some guys from the portal, really, really good ones. Terry Roberts is the freshman. He was Terry Roberts is not a freshman. the big get for us. But, boy, you can build a team real quick. And he's got a really tough team this season. Well, and what he's done defensively is tremendous. Georgia was awful last year defensively, Ravi. They were number 318 in the country in defensive efficiency. Mike White comes in as a defensive-minded coach, and right now they're a top 60 team. Yeah. So quick, and they make you bounce the ball. For those three-point shooters against single coverage again just stay attached there you go and lindsay down the other end he's been calling that so this time they get it on frank anselm he picks up his second foul anselm saying that i just had an arm bar on his back and they've been calling that yeah that's a legal defensive play though mike white having the same conversation yep. two hands is one thing an arm bar is different and there's the arm bar He's fine. His back's to the basket. Maybe with a grab right there. That's yeah. what it was. That, that left arm comes up, and that's a good call. Oscar Shibwe, a 67% free throw shooter. One of the 
keys to success that Kentucky had against Tennessee, Jimmy, was their free throw shooting in that game. I mean, 22 or 25 free throws in that game? Yeah. And they needed every one of them. Now, it's interesting to me that John Calipari called the reigning national player of the year out, saying you're not spending enough time in the gym. Yeah. Has Oscar lost his edge a little bit? I kind of picked He's up on it sweaty. over the first couple of months of the season. <clears throat> and now Cal is starting to call him back to who you're supposed to be. That tough, rugged, blue-collar, no-one-out-works-me guy, but it can't just be in games, and Cal has called him on it. He was recovering from that knee injury, and he definitely looked a step slower. He wasn't explosive. That, that seems to have come back a little bit. You mentioned Tennessee, Jimmy. They were in action tonight, and they beat Mississippi State by 11, 70, 50. Yeah, that's about cool. Is, uh, <laughs> hey, we got the line, baby. The officiating crew of Joe Lindsay, Owen Short, and Jeff Hartness are hearing it here from a packed house at Rupp Arena. Wheeler is really good at full court ball pressure. But he sometimes can get a little handsy. He's not nearly as good as a half court defender, but he can bother you bringing it up. And he just rode the hip of Roberts. Yeah, that's crazy. And Owen Short with a call. That's a bad, that's a bad call. Foul against Kentucky. George has got seven. Roberts. Yeah, that's crazy. Ying. And, him down. and to your point, you can't foul Georgia. What are they now? They've made, what, 37 out of their last 39? Money. Well, 30 of 32 coming in, Jimmy. And they're 8 of 9, so 38. And 32 plus 9 is what? It's 1 down 41. 41. 41. Yeah. yeah. I love where you're at right now. And I like you back in the analyst role, I'll be honest with you. She way off the window a little too strong. You and Jay Billis were terrific. Blackout, nice bro. That's all it was. And Roberts, uh, boy, is he impressive. He can go right, he can go left. He is probably the best change of speed guard that we have in the SEC right now. And he's a freshman. Yeah, Jay, man, he drives. He's it. not a freshman. Stop and go ability, draws <laughs> fouls. He's a <laughs> tough, tough cover. He's not a freshman, he has dude. no back down whatsoever in Rupp Arena. Well done, zero in red. Bulldogs with the lead. Halftime reports a tight Tuesday. Close finishes all around the country will take you everywhere. OT Classic in Manhattan. What are you seeing here? Well, I talked to Mike White today, and he told me he wanted to drive this Kentucky team in transition and in half court. Terrell Robinson has been terrific. Ten points in this game tonight. Jimmy Dykes finds look, Terrell Sutton. You can't guard the ball, and you can't guard ball screens. You're going to be in trouble and right now. Kentucky's ball screen defense is horrific, and their inability to keep the ball out of the lane is being exploited. End of conversation. He, he just he dropped the mic and walked away in the conversation but he's right i mean we've talked about it if you can't guard the ball against georgia you're in serious trouble and what you're going to do with shibway going forward every team is going to make oscar shibway make decisions defensively guarding ball screens until he proves he can choke you off at that spot Jimmy, you said it. That's what John Calipari just said to his team in the huddle. They have to stay in front of the basketball. Terry Roberts is having his way. He told his team, you have got to get back. You have to stop him and make him work in the half court. Stay in front of him because what Georgia wants to do is swing the basketball, drive the basketball, and get fouled. Yeah, they get you in a defensive rotation. and the, the, the game is in this kid's hands. He is so good at dancing with the ball, changing direction, stop first with a blow-by. And he makes a lot of tough layups around the rim going right or left he's an excellent big time layup maker with a little bit of a float game as well tough cover hard to guard both of those teammates with a window at florida southwestern state like i said he was a freshman he's a freshman with the program he's a senior as far as years go but it's his first year and the big get came from the transfer portal and every opposing coach says about Roberts, real deal. And he has been that again tonight. He's been outstanding with 10 points in 14 minutes. Four of six from the floor. He launches a three. Right it on the money. He's got 13. He's He's an all -star. In play. And he is feeling it right now. I mean, Roberts is shaking his head. There's no one on Kentucky's team that can guard me. And I'm not so sure he's not right. Chiwe will shoot it from the free throw line. He knocks that down. Last time we were here, was it Michi Johnson who looked like Magic Johnson? Yeah. And right now, Roberts is feeling that flow. He reminds me, Roberts does, a little bit of Patrick Beverly when he yeah. played at Arkansas. Yep. Yep. The body, especially defensively, he is a glove on the defensive end of the floor. Let's get money. Well, that was his former junior college teammate <laughs> at Southwestern State. He banks it in. If I'm Kentucky, I go zone. 
If I'm Kentucky, I go zone in this game because you can't guard Georgia you, Alabama what, no, right no. now, man to man. Shooting 57 percent as a team, 13 of 23, and they've made four of nine from three. Livingston a two, that's no good. Oh, oh, who's on the other side? Wait, so I'm to, of course, was in Alabama hey. now here at Georgia. And Roberts oh, it... got Livingston on him with 15 on the shot clock. He's He's isolate on the island. He doesn't need a ball screen to work off of. Damn, That's T, all. you are crazy. Off to the right, <laughs> Chibwe gets it, throws it out to Livingston. I like He'll it. One on one. And we'll get a block. He just watched the defender try to set himself and absorb contact, but he kept moving backwards. <laughs> T there it is, the Florida Southwestern State team 2021, and Roberts and Aquindo there, and boy, have they combined to make this a very different Georgia team than what we have seen the last couple of years. In fact, the last time they were ranked was 2011. <laughs> Roberts now has two fouls. Yeah, this is, this is he's going to out of the game with 2.15 to go in the first half. <laughs> he's been better off just completely bailing out of the way right. as opposed this to backpedaling and didn't get out of the way defensively. <laughs> Justin Hill will take his spot, six feet, 185, out of Houston, Texas. Another transfer, he's from Longwood. Make sure somebody hold your specific, bro. And Jabri Abdul-Rahim comes in as well. So, so both the guys, Robertson and Quindo, go to the bench. And Rabbi, it's not... Georgia now has a lineup on the floor. Hill is a primary driver. The yeah. other four guys... Can it's also do big. something off the bounce, but you've taken Oquindo and Roberts out of the game. If you're Kentucky, if you can't stay in front of the ball now, you're in serious trouble. Hill number 11 in red is the main guy. Yo, yeah, he's about to wild out too. Jimmy, about Alabama's to up Toronto. by 20 on Vanderbilt over on the SEC network, and with Kansas losing, Yay. Alabama's going to be right near the top of the next poll, assuming they win on the weekend. Carl, they're the best team Alabama is in college yeah. basketball. The outside. Not just because of the number Everybody that they're else. doing tonight, but just watch them play offensively, the future pros, helping. Helping. the length, the depth, the defense, everything they have right now. And Georgia right. starting to carve up Kentucky's man-to-man -man defense. I thought Braylon Bridges taking it to the big fella who's into the game. We're going to Onyenso. Freshman at 6'11 went right at him. Good bounce mm. pass there. Pretty play by Wallace with a drop off. And a great job by Onyenso mm. to get his eyes mm. immediately on the basketball when he That's rolled out the ball screen. Freshman to freshman, well done. Point. I need this Kentucky stopped Georgia's oh, offense. Yeah. They've got 40 already. And they double bridges, and he's a passer. Oh, yeah. Just missed the shot. Yeah, oh, too strong. Wallace with a box out. Two. Frederick, ball fake three. No good. Boy, they put pressure on you, though, Georgia, don't they? They ran Frederick off, made him sidestep into a three, and even the second defender was flying. 24% three point defense by Georgia on the year. They are electric. Finding the basketball. What did Mike okay. White tell us earlier today? If CJ Frederick gets an open three, he's going to lose his mind. Yeah. Wide open. Money! M.A. Moncrief for the flush. Kentucky cannot guard Georgia man to man in this game. And if Calipari has a zone, he may want to play it today because Georgia's guards are getting downhill. The Bigs are doing a great job of cutting up 11 on the dogs. Hard, quick rim cut. And then you don't get on the white line. Even Antonio Reeves is hugged up on the on the far side. Number 12 is white should be on the white line. And Kentucky getting carved up with passing, with cutting, and the inability to stay in front of the ball. Kentucky allows about 67 points a game this season. Georgia 63. Zone defense by Georgia. This is Toppin's time to shine around that logo area. They will push that zone out to cover up those three-point shooters. Well, there it is from the free throw line. That shot is way off by Jacob Toppin. Loose ball on the ground and out of bounds. Great hustle there by both Reeves okay. for Kentucky. You still get a rebound, though. And also, M.A. Moncrief. For Georgia, Toppin was rushed. He shot that ball before Yo, he ever did not print my fucking didn't text. Get his man. shoulder square, shot it in a hurry. Better watch Frederick out of bounds under right now in his zone defense. He can throw it in and run to the corner for a shot. Georgia's 42 points ties a season high for points in a first half. 25 and 10 on the shot clock. Wallace. I agree. 
needed it. Uh, huge. In the zone to shrink down a little bit on that defense and a quick find for Wallace. Last shot of the half coming up. Hill trying to blow by Wallace. Gets to the baseline Ooh, through a turnover. Good. Two seconds. Mm -hmm. One second. Wallace throws it up. No uh, good. And it will end the half. Georgia leading 42-34. Roberts has 13 points on hey. five of eight shooting. Marty. Thank you, Ravi. Coach, how do you assess your team's performance? Go. Got to stop the dribble drive. We're turning sideways and got to make some shots. Thank you, Coach. There you have it, Ravi. Stop the dribble drive. Make a few shots. Yeah, not a, not exactly a mic drop, but a walk off for sure. <laughs> and a lot of work to do during the halftime. 55% from the floor, Georgia. And they're doing what South Carolina did just differently. They lead by eight. Here is Zubin, Alfonso, and Seth. For me. Ravi, thank you so much. The Jeep halftime report is underway. Nearly 300 meetings between Kansas and Kansas State. This was one of the best final seconds here. Coach tied at 72. Here's an opportunity. The yeah, Olympic opportunity to get the pass away. Yeah, no uh, <laughs> uh, No foul, Seth. So we are headed to overtime. The player of the game, Fonz, hands down, even the defeat was Jalen Wilson. Jalen Wilson was absolutely extraordinary, hunting his shot, getting some easy ones in transition. He had 38 in this game. Uh, coach, never want to criticize Bill Self here, but I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Coach, especially making situations, special situations. But watch right on your right hand side, right there. You're going to see Jalen Wilson playing above. Deontay Johnson, they clear at the backside. It looks like even worse over the top. if I get that one. Because, pressure, uh, and a great cut by Deontay Johnson. Yeah. All right, three mm -hmm. Kansas players fell down. Ball in the hands of DeJuan Harris, Fonz. It's where you want it to be. A little too deep there. Trap, nowhere to throw the basketball. That was a great defensive play by Kansas State. Three guys around the basketball. They were able to turn him over. No Grady Dick on the floor. No KJ Adams on the floor. Not as easy. Legal court's on. Totally legal. Fired up is Coach Jerome Tang. KSU. They will meet again January 31st at Allen Fieldhouse. Can't wait. You hear the crowd, the roar. Primetime players. Yo, Fonz, we showed 38. And crazy. Deontay, one of the great bounce back stories in the entire season. One of the great stories. I mean, two years ago, we, we didn't know if we would actually have him here on this earth. And now all of a sudden he goes to Kansas State, Seth, gets new life. He's become a go-to guy for this team. And I just love how they move him around in the offense, Seth. Is they can have him out on the wing. Of course, they're looking for mismatch opportunities, which he would have if you switch uh, four or five, and he just lines you up, gets to the rim one time, and he loves getting to that foul line area for his pull up, Jay, and can knock down the three. What an incredible you do that. Cover. It looks like it's going. Oh, in. man. I tell you, you put a small guy on him, he brings you into the box. Yes. You put a bigger guy on him, yes. he takes you away. Mm -hmm. And then he does a great job of moving without the yes, basketball. Uh, you saw what happened. We call that top block, and they played above him on that last play. So, what does he do? He back cuts. Great execution. Great job yeah. by Jerome Tang. No question. So you're watching the SEC no, and yeah, ESPN yeah. right now. Elsewhere, some more SEC action. Yeah, As you know, it has been really a difficult week for Alabama. That's for sure. They're taking on Vanderbilt. The nation's best freshman, Seth Brandon Miller. Brandon Miller is the best freshman in college basketball. His game translates to the next level. To me, he reminds me of Kevin Durant. I, I certainly see it, Seth. I mean, his ability to be able to play in ball screens, you go under, knocking down the three at a 45% clip, a willing passer, rebounder as well. How about this, Seth? Leads the SEC in scoring as a freshman. And this is such a good defensive team, this Alabama team. They sit the stands and run you up the three-point line to protect the rim. Jordan. Whoa, Jordan oh, oh, oh. Watch out for Bully the Bulldog Day. Uh, be careful. He almost took the, the damn mask out of his leg. Uh, Zakai Ziegler was on fire. This is going to be Mississippi State Shaquille Moore, but then it's just going to be a healthy dose, coach. A healthy dose of Ziegler. Yeah, Ziegler coming off the bench gets 24 points, and obviously, so Josiah James, another guy that comes off the bench, gets to sit uh, 13. Mm. But those two guys, the ability to bring those two guys off the bench, you had to make shots in the second half, and that's exactly what. Tennessee did. Think about this. First half, one for eight from the three point line. Second half, they made big time threes. Eight for nine from the three. He had 24, six rebounds, four dimes, and three steals. Oscar Sheebway in Kentucky have plenty of work to do. Oh, Back with more of the Chief Halftime Report right after this. Need more of that? <laughs> this halftime report is presented by G.
quiet in the first half. Only six points in the first half and went nuts in the second half. 17 of his 23 in the second half alone. Sasser shed a mark over 49 points. It's the best two-way backcourt in college basketball. Getting it done. Javier Francis for the finish. It, when it's all said and done, finds 20-point win for Kelvin's club. Well, they beat you up on the glass. They turn you over. They get out in transition. When they shoot the ball as well as they did tonight from 3, 12 to 24, they're impossible to beat. In Ames, ESPN Plus, the return of Tyrese Hunter. Texas, Iowa State. Iowa State will take the lead here early at Hilton Coliseum. And then, Coach, I know you've been keeping an eye on Gabe Kalsher. Gabe Kalsher playing at a high level elite defender. Shot it really well as a freshman at Minnesota. Seeing a big basket. Game winners, you've got to guard him. If you don't guard him, he's going to make shots. He's physical, he's tough, he defends. He's kind of the heart and soul of the Simon State team box. Hey, Seth, how did you feel about Caleb Grib knocking down a three and telling you guys to call a timeout? <laughs> that would have gone really well. <laughs> all Baycock, all night for Carolina Fox. As it should be. Feed the big man and allow the other guys to play off of him. They did that tonight. He had 11 attempts, and he's so efficient. 20 points on 11 uh, field goal attempts, Seth. I'd like to see Carolina get Caleb Love going. Caleb Love once again struggled two for 10 from the three-point line. R.J. Davis doing a nice job of distributing the basketball and getting the ball inside to the big fellow Fonzarelli. Feed the big man! Back with more of the Jeep Halftime Report next. Super Tuesday, Scott will take you around the hardwood for all the top men's basketball action. Warriors having a tough year, but they were at the White House. General Manager Bob Myers doing Scott. And if you care about numbers other than the final score, it's all bad beats. Terry Roberts had 13 in the first half. Guys, can Kentucky rally here in the second? Got to sit in stance of guard. You can't get stops. You can't get back in the game. You can't get stops. Got to face guard Terry Roberts. It's got 13 again. This has been the Jeep Halftime Report. And we chronicled it. You saw it all the time. Senior Terry Roberts, grad transfer, the transfer out of Bradley, Jimmy. 20 of their 42 points come in the paint. They are getting by every defender one-on-one. -on -one. Mike White told us today, I do know this, my guys will fight for two hours in rough tonight. So far, so good. They have been tremendous. Georgia has been, Ravi, off the bounce. And it's Roberts and Oquindo have done most of the damage. And you think, well, why can't we guard the ball? First of all, Kentucky's not great at guarding the ball one-on-one. -on -one. But that Georgia offense, how they spread the floor. <laughs> yeah, they did. For Georgia <laughs> have made a three-point shot. So you can't just shrink the floor completely and get in the gaps. If you do, now Georgia starts firing the three ball on you. But the biggest issue for Kentucky right now is staying in front of the dadgum basketball. Roberts Oquindo doing major damage. Sheboy's getting his. He's got 14 and 9 because Georgia's not doubling down. They're not firing is what they call it. They're allowing Sheboy to go to work, but they're taking away the perimeter shooting of Kentucky so far. Mm -hmm. And the field goal percentage tells the story. 56% Georgia is from the floor. Kentucky at 33%. And even worse, 28% from three, which is right on brand for Georgia and their defense. Yep. They shut you down from outside. We'll see if a halftime talk from Calipari will do anything. We'll get Marty Smith's thoughts in just a minute as well. There was a South Carolina loss at home last Tuesday and a win over Tennessee. A Sheepway starts with a baseline jump hook. And the defense stays the same for Georgia to start with. One-on-one -on -one isolation for Sheepway. Let him get his, but we're keeping you off the three-point line, and we're trying our best to keep you off the offensive glass. A Quindo testy shot, and it is blocked out of bounds. We're going to get a foul, too, underneath. And they're going to call that against M.A. Moncrief. Marty? Gentlemen, as you eloquently stated, Terry Roberts has been unguardable so far. Here in the first half, I talked to Mike White. He said he loves the tempo that Roberts is playing with. Aggressive, not erratic, and that gives them an opportunity on every possession. We have a chance, he said. They, he feels like their transition defense has been good, but it must be better. He feels like their defensive rebounding has been good. It must be better, as we see Oscar Shebway with an opportunity for an and one. Lastly, Mike White said to me, their entire motto, Let's just be a little bit better in the second half so we have a shot at the end of this thing. The fouls on Braylon Bridges the same way that Kentucky couldn't stop Roberts. Georgia's having a whole hard time trying to stop 34. Well, they're going to get a whole lot of Oscar Sheboy in the second half if they continue with their single coverage. And Sheboy's tracking the 32 and 20 game. Yeah. Will that be enough? He's got to get a little bit of help offensively. Okay. He's got 19 points. Frederick Wallace topping Sheboy. And Livingston on the floor. Trying to sit hard on that right hand of Roberts is Wallace. 
Got him on an island. Roberts will go to work. Ten seconds to go. That's a very good defensive position by Wallace. Went straight up, and he caused the problem on the shot. Yeah, got his elbows by his ears. Took the foul out of the game. Frederick into the lane. Another floater in and out. He's having a rough time shooting tonight. Is C.J. Frederick. He's 0 for 4. And Reeves and Frederick, they got to make shots. That, yeah. That's their number one job description. This kid's dagger right there. Roberts knocks down a three. Mike White, there's a reason why he loves the rhythm that Roberts is playing in. He's not too fast. Yeah. Kentucky hasn't sped him up. He's <laughs> yeah, that was a negative crazy shot. Points bro. And two threes now. Like out of bounds and stay with Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. a personal challenge, right? From a coaching staff to the defensive player, you have got to stay in front of him. Can you do it? <laughs> you know, Very difficult. I, didn't teach him that. I, I talked about Kentucky. They have a zone in their back pocket. It's a two-three zone. And if this lack of staying yeah, in front of the ball continues, the you would expect like, Kentucky to give at least a chance. That. Frederick, still no good. Oh, Sheepway offensive rebound. Jump. An authoritative flush. That's Just normal. a monster, is he not? And he is so good at understanding weak side rebound. <laughs> Four-point right, game. Right. That one is off to the left, and this time it's Toppin with a rebound. Chance to cut it to no, one with a three. Toppin, that's off. Shibwe had a hand on it, but it's Georgia coming away with it. Ooh, late whistle there, and the crowd didn't like it. Calipari's got his arms up in the air. C.J. Frederick gets called with a block. Rabbi, we have seen more of these plays this year because officials have been told, read the play, don't guess, take your time, see the play to the finish. And I think that's why you saw a little Tom bit of a late call because Frederick is, looked like he's still sliding over to it the was right. Topping in the back. It was a late whistle, not a popular call. But again, Georgia, they're going to be aggressive now. The hey. first eight seconds, hey. they're coming at you. And from there, the ball gets in the hands of Roberts in the half court. Yeah. Ardres McBride's free ah. throw is no good. Hey, James. That's that's about as close of a call as you can have live to make. I mean, did Frederick get set at the last split second? Possibly. Was he also sliding to the right a little bit? Boy, a rare double free throw miss, and there's another foul. This time, it's going to be against Georgia, and it's M.A. Moncrief. Yeah, no That's basic. his second. Kentucky's got a little momentum thanks to Shibwe to start this second half. And now defensively, this is huge on the road. It's going to sound very simple, but it's important. Georgia has to talk, and they have to listen. Both things have to be in play right now in this building for Georgia on the defensive end. We're just smothering Frederick, are they not? Yeah, Shibwe down in the paint. Goes with a left hand, up and a Man, foul. Bro, you and Oscar stop her Shibu in has taken over in the second Easy half. In I, I thought he traveled as well. Mike White saying the same thing. I think Shibwe shifted his pivot foot. He picks it up. There's one, two, three. That's a travel. But the problem now Mike White has is he's going to stay with this single isolation guarding Shibwe. And is Shibay going to put up monster numbers in this game, enough to carry Kentucky to a win? Oscar Shibay in recent weeks has implored his teammates as he gets the rebound and a three-pointer. Frederick. Frederick Ooh. nails the three. Shibay told me today to shoot around. First we got a timeout, Ravi. We got a timeout. We do. We got a loud timeout. Shibway celebrating. Kentucky's grabbed the lead. A 7-0 run over the last 55 seconds. SEC on ESPN. Kentucky now back on top of Georgia, 46-45. A 7-0 run, Jimmy, to start. Ravi, this is a big play. Oscar Shibway travels. You're going to watch. He sticks that left foot down, which becomes his pivot foot. And then he's going to stick it down again. That is a travel. And Roberts, zero in red, is calling the same thing. The call did not, was not made, and Mike White spent probably a minute of the timeout right in the ear of Joe Lindsay and Owen Short. And I'm sure the message sent is, I know the guy's good, the National Player of the Year, but he can't have an advantage with his feet with the travel. So the message has been sent now from Mike White, who expects to win this game. 
Mike White took over a program last year that was 1-17 in this league and has flipped their mentality. But right now, that shot by Frederick has flipped this game. Shooters are going to shoot. Frederick's first three of the night. He's one of six on the floor. Shibwe, 23-12. and 12. And Roberts has been a little quiet here in the second half. He's got 16 and the ball. Georgia likes to set a ball screen and duck in. And Shibwe is having no part of it down low. Yeah, over top and tough shot. Shibwe picks up his 13th rebound. They had to take that jump shot because Shibwe blew up the duck in inside. Kentucky's first lead since it was 14-13. Spain stack. Frederick's going to pop. Yeah, Shibwe camps out again. They can't get it to it with 10 on the shot clock. Top and baseline. Spins in the middle, throws it up, and actually threw it down. Shibwe has it. No foul. And shot clock expires right there. The defense that time by Georgia. They smothered Oscar. And now putting traffic around Oscar on the touch. We'll see if that adjustment continues. <laughs> Yo, he looked right at the camera. You see here how think. active Chris Livingston was on this rebound. He taps it, gets his hand on it. Oscar grabs it, and it's out to C.J. Frederick for the three-pointer. In the huddle during that timeout, John Calipari was applauding Chris Livingston, Livingston's active hands. And at that moment, C.J. Frederick stood up, looked at his teammates, and said, Guys, this game is about one thing, and that thing is defense. We have to get stops Love consistently. It. Well, he just lost That's his man son. on the defensive end, and a pull-up jump shot is made by Abdul Rahim. Yeah, Frederick has become the vocal leader of this team, though. And you trust his fight, you trust his care. Probably as much as anyone right now if you're a Kentucky fan. Shibwe, baseline, too easy for him. Went right oh, by his man. There's no answer for Oscar Shibwe right now. That's Anselm got about to get I just wonder when Mike White will have to change his individual defense and start firing on Shibwe. Top in the big block. A little bit out of control oh, by Roberts three. that time. Two, Livingston takes it hard to the rack, and Kentucky has pushed their lead oh, down to three. Kentucky. You talk about playing a physical to game on the, the offensive way. end. That's what Livingston just did. We talk about being physical defensively. He was awfully physical with that forceful drive. Mm -hmm. Livingston has four. Where will Georgia's offense come from? Shibwe commits the foul way outside on Anselm. And for Oscar, that's his second. Ravi Livingston is a 12% three-point shooter in conference play. So instead of shooting one from the corner, he makes the play out of the corner. Toppin dives out of his way, just right through the chest. Heavy contact with force. Kentucky's starting to find themselves. Liking it. The head coach calls you out on a statewide radio show and says, Oscar's got to get back in the gym and go back to work. It probably gets your attention a little bit. Nice guys now with an edge in this ball game. Kind of 25 short. points and 15 rebounds. I said he's tracking the 32 and 20 game. He might go beyond that. Georgia doesn't have one guy that can hold, hold him one on one Trouble. on the low block. Very few teams do. Will Mike White change and go back to doubling the post, which is typically what he does. He calls it firing on the post and try to slow down Sheboy a little bit and see if Kentucky can make him pay, make this guy a passer, because right now it's man amongst boys when 34 has the ball. With Kentucky taking the momentum here, gentlemen, Mike White just looked at his team in the huddle and said, respond, baby, respond. Do what we do. And assistant coach Eric Pastrana then stood up and said, believe in what we do. Believe in what we do. It will work. Yeah. Well, what they did in the first half was rely on Terry Roberts a lot. He's sitting here with 16 points. No one else is in double figures. And this is Roberts. And he lost the ball for a second and threw it up, and he drew the foul, so he'll go to the free throw line. And there's no panic in the way he plays, and obviously being a veteran with his play at Bradley and now here, you can just see there's a calmness about him on the floor, Jimmy. So what do we do? Well, they are a downhill, driving, one-on-one, -on -one, hard-nosed bunch of dudes talking about Georgia. They typically gain rebound pretty well. Now, Kentucky's pumping them on the glass right now to the tune of 30 to 18. Kentucky has 12 offensive rebounds. But if you're Georgia, you have to stay airtight on your three-point defense and have some type of resistance on Oscar Shibwe. Antonio Reeves is in the game. Frederick goes to the bench. 
Livingston getting some more minutes, too. And we've seen him be a little more aggressive. Good game here, 50-49, 14 and a half to play. It's a Georgia program that won one game last year in SEC, 1-17. and 17. Right. And Mike White has his guys believing they can win in Rupp Arena with 14 to go. Reeves into the game, and he buries a three. Right off the bench, right into the bucket. Oh, blow by Roberts to Shibwe. Throws it up too hard. Oh, and it's on the bounce off of Oscar Shibwe. Boy, back-to-back -back action we had there. How about Reeves, Jimmy, coming off the wood and knocking down a three? Yeah, it's a 2-3 zone by Georgia. Watch Toppin flash. And he does a tremendous job of finding Reeves on the backside. Watch the flash by Toppin to the logo. That's where you attack zones. Catch it. Read the defense. Survey the play. What's it say? It says right here you got a shooter coming out. And Antonio Reeves catches it. A catch-and-stick guy finally catches and sticks one. Reeves has got nine. Aquindo's back into the game. He's got seven. Cario Aquindo. You know, you probably went zone. Oh, wow. Bad what a pass. pass. Yeah. Bad pass. Livingston will go right into Aquindo, That's throw all. it up, and they're going to get a travel on Livingston. Oh. These are two football players here, Jimmy. Yeah, he did. He, tra he traveled before he ran over Oquindo. Is a good call by Cho Lindsay. Ball gets stuck, hung up on him, takes that extra step. Joe Lindsay sprinting on the side in position to make the call. Well, he's got some shake, does he? He does, and he's Man. got some. Sure, this he nigga Terry is crazy. Fingers, Chill, fam. Roberts, five big points. He's got 21. Yay! 31 games for Bradley last year. Average almost 15 points a game. He has zero. Stay zero on him, T. He's going to shoot that zone. shit, I tell I you. Primarily to try to cover up Shibway and put him in traffic. Yeah, good ball Work. movement that time, and a cutting top and lays it up off the glass. Top is such right a right phenomenal right. cutter against the zone from the weak side to ball side. George has got three ball handlers in a window. Roberts and Hill on the floor right now. They're going to make a change shortly as it looks like Anselm is going to come in. Roberts the handoff and Wallace too close to him and he picks up the foul. Third on Wallace. Ravi, watch Toppin right here operating in the middle of that zone. He knows if you win the nail and Toppin wins the nail right there, catches on the nail and the seal off by Seabray, really well done by Kentucky in their zone offense. And a hot potato too because Livingston got it and got rid of it real quick. Wallace will go to the bench with that third foul. Wheeler back into the game. And Roberts right this over him, and that crazy, one is off bro. the iron. Relax. Livingston for the rebound. With the hero ball like that. You got AR on your team. Roberts just blew a shoe. And he put it back on. How, how talented <laughs> was that? <laughs> Pass there. Good defense. You're about to lose another shoe for <laughs> Wheeler try to throw it to him. Roberts. This time nice. he kicks. And a three is knocked down. Good extra pass. <laughs> Justin Hill buries the three. They tied him shoes, boy. I'm in love with Terry Roberts in this game. He's got the downhill drives both directions. He's got the step back threes. He's got the IQ to understand swing, swing results in a three. Georgia right there. <laughs> yeah, what's up, man? Teams. Career high is 26. He did that at Bradley and also against Auburn this season. High flying Wallace throws it down. Yeah, sometimes you have to attack back. Wow. They do. <laughs> Cause that's that boy. Back and some rim rattlers. <laughs> Mike White told his guys today when they score the first eight seconds, we are coming at Kentucky. Message sent and received by Oquindo. 57-57. Frederick kicks. Wallace will launch. That's a little short. And the battle for the rebound is won by Georgia. Here's Roberts. Georgia's so fast recovering the three-point shooter. Mm. Roberts uh, offensive foul. How was that offensive? He jumped up. That is his third. That's a big That's foul. crazy. 11.50 to go. Sure is. We'll take a timeout, and the roof at Ruff is starting to shake a little bit because the rims are starting to shake. Casey Wallace with a push. And then seconds later, down the other end, a window. 
shakes the house. What a game on a Super Tuesday. Tied at 57. Last week, what is wrong with Kentucky basketball and what happens now? New low with the loss to the worst rated team. And the fall of Kentucky is, is here. And then they go and beat Tennessee. They cancel the obituary. Stunning Tennessee number five. Vindication for Calipari. And, and where are we now? We're in a tie game with a Georgia team that is much improved on your home floor at Rupp Arena. 57-57. As he said, after the South Carolina loss, I've been here. I've done this. I'm not worried. But you, looking at all his players, have got to learn to fight. I'll fight. I'm not going anywhere. And it doesn't appear as if that is going to happen. Calipari is here. And the long-term contract is real. And he's got a terrific recruiting class coming next year. And maybe it's about the teams in this league getting a little bit better. They kick it with 10 on the shot clock. And Wallace and Frederick with Reeves on the floor moving around the perimeter. Gets the screen and he buries it. He has got such a quick release. And Mike White has changed how he's covering Shibuya because that time the double team came from the baseline, made Shibuya a passer. First time we've seen it all game. Big, big part of this game, Jimmy, 11 and a quarter to go. Roberts is on the bench with three fouls. Will Georgia be able to stick with Kentucky until he comes back in? A quindo, that's no good. Toppin goes up and rips it off the glass. Yeah, how much do you trust yeah. Roberts to play with three fouls? He's such a vital part. I think Mike White will talk to him about it getting back in. I I'd get him in now within the next minute. Uh -oh. Wallace, be careful. Bam. That goes yeah. down, and Kentucky very, very hot here in the second half. Very different than the first half. And look who's on the floor. It's Wallace, Reeves, and Frederick. Yep. Stretching that Georgia defense out. 67% from the floor. Reeves, this will send the place into a complete state, but he threw it too long off the iron. But Roberts is sitting on the bench, so at least for the moment, you and White are not on the same page about bringing him back in. Uh, Mike's probably trying to get to the next media timeout, the eight minute mark. He did go down and talk to Terry. In that Brazil. last possession. One on one with Shibwe takes him, and that's an easy block. That should be a rim. shot clock violation. Yeah, that ball was blocked. I never got to the rim, and the shot clock reset itself. With the help of someone pushing a button. Here at Rupp. <laughs> Some, some things don't make a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> Watched it. Where's the shot clock when he can't see it, can't see the where it was? Three. The rabbi had talked about it earlier. Crisis brings change. And it was a crisis in here last Tuesday. Shot goes up, never hits the rim. It's secured by Georgia with three on the shot clock. That's probably where they will reset it. But what change did it bring to Kentucky? We talked about it, Tennessee. They fought, man. They got downhill. They got to the free throw line. They converted. They out-rebounded a very physical Tennessee team. Kind of old-school coaching by Calipari getting away from any type of finesse stuff. They're going to have to do the same thing right now with under 10 to go. Yeah. Speaking of that victory over Tennessee and the fight, I spoke with UK assistant coach Chin Coleman today, who got emotional towards the end of that victory over the Volunteers. The reason the brotherhood, the value, and the outcome of committing to shared sacrifice. Coleman, Coleman told me that the Wildcats had a pair of therapeutic sessions ahead of Tennessee. He called them therapeutic sessions. I think they were more come to Jesus meetings based on talking to the players. But what happened within those two meetings was a galvanizing force. They galvanized each other rather than being energy vampires, which they believed that they had been. He said they believe in this team. They know the personnel they have and that they have not lived up to their potential. They opened up to one another in those meetings and decided enough is enough. It changed everything, Coleman told me. Now the Wildcats have to sustain it, and he admitted in this league, that'll be really damn hard. Draw a line. At some point, you just have to draw a dead yeah, One line. second wow. on the shot clock, and out of the break, they get a layup. 
There was one second put back on the clock and they managed to score two points. Ravi, that is ridiculously good by Georgia to put Oquindo in a foot race to the ball and to win the race. You know how hard that is to do a score with one? Frederick, good ball fake, then he fires a three. That one's off to the right and the rebound for Georgia. See what they do. First eight seconds of every trip, they want to try to score a bucket. Roberts back on the floor. Long three, way off. Now the only thing harder than scoring with one second in the shot clock is trying to think of all the subjects Marty touched on that soliloquy. We had vampires come to Jesus meetings. We had a lot of stuff going on. There. Energy, energy givers and takers. There's that double team by Shibwe making you a passer and he delivers to Toppin. Let's go back to that one second play. Toppin just gets abused by Oquindo. Watch out here in the corner. This is going to be a shove and a foot race to the ball, and three and red's going to win it. What? A little bit of a shove off, not much. A foot race to the ball, and CJ Frederick doesn't take away the rim. And Oquindo makes him pay. What a terrific play call to get your best athlete streaking to the rim. But I mean, as a defender, one second on the shot clock. Isn't yeah. that the one thing you have to guard against? Toppin top was in the absolute worst position defensively you can be in with one second. He was on the high shoulder, almost inviting Noquindo to a foot race, which he lost. Yeah, that's hard to do. That's, that's hard to do. You know, the other thing that Cal did before Tennessee, he took every player's phone the night before the game and got him off social media, got him off text messages, and got him locked in. And I just want you and Marty to know next Monday night in Fayetteville, <laughs> turn your phone in to me at my house before yeah. the Super Tuesday game in Bud Walton, and we will have much more focus ready to play. Is that an invite to your house, too? Just to turn in the phone. No. A Quindo takes it hard. He's going to pick up the foul on Reeves. What a hard right hand driver this dude is. He and Roberts both, but Roberts can go left a little better. And Oquindo is just a fantastic. Bulldog bowling ball going to the rim down that right pipe. And go over to Lex Live and do your bowling expedition again? Possibly, if we have to. Quindo after his 11th point. And he gets it. Our star studded NBA Wednesday doubleheader. Hawks are in Dallas. They get the Mavs at 7.30. And then the Mile High City, the Western Conference leading Nuggets hosting the Timberwolves. The Nuggets share the sugar with it's the best teams in the league. They are fun to watch. They pass the ball. They shoot it fairly well. Old school Denver Nugget Dan Issel type basketball. That's on Wednesday. Oquindo had 22 last year in Rupp Arena. He's up to 12 right now. Wallace, man, he's starting to feel it. Yeah, he is. Yeah, that's that's what you thought Wallace would be this year. Just a physical guard with that pull up jump shot. He's got 12. Reeves has 11. Shebway 25. Kentucky ice in that side ball action right now for Georgia, making it tough for Roberts to get reversed. Oh. They're going to call a trip on Jacob Toppin. It looked as much as if M.A. Moncrief lost his footing, but if there's contact with the feet, he stepped yeah. on his foot. Yeah. Stepped on it, still is a trip. Right there. Just that foot block, Owen Short, right around the baseline as. That lead official staring right down at it. Here's Roberts with Wallace on him. He looks up at the clock, sets himself again. Put him on an island, let him go to work. Pulls up. That ball was deflected by Shibwe. Moncrief wins the battle for the rebound, and they have it picked off. Here's Shibwe. Lays it up and in. No foul, but he laid it up and in. Boy, there appeared to be contact on that layup by Oscar. A seven-point Kentucky lead. It, it looked to me like a dangerous foul, yes, actually, on Shibwe for an airborne player to have that much contact. Largest a... lead, and they're going to call Oscar Shibwe underneath with the hold. Zach Eady is the leading candidate for National Player of the Year, but last year's Player of the Year just made plays that makes you think maybe this guy can make a run at it. That's a lot of arm contact on Shibwe as an airborne player, but regardless, man, message sent from Cal to Shibwe last night on the radio show, and 34 has delivered a monster game by Shibwe with 27 and 16. Aggressive.com. Georgia shooting has been 
far less than it was in the first half. This half they are six of 17. Meantime, Kentucky the other way is shooting 64 percent. Xavier Wheeler's minutes have been reduced dramatically. We've seen a lot of Wallace and Frederick on the floor at the same time with Reeves. And the positive signs for Kentucky, Jimmy, to me anyway, the play of Reeves, I think tonight for sure Livingston has had some good minutes. We've seen him be far more aggressive. And with the exception of Robertson Aquindo, the problem for Mike White tonight has been where else is the offense coming from? Well, the lineup that has heavy minutes tonight for Cal is Toppin, yep. Shibway, Frederick, Wallace, and Reeves. They, they produce at Tennessee, and they're producing again tonight. And that's probably going to be your heavy minute guys going forward mm -hmm. if this lead holds up. The Ravi, the SEC, it's a it's a athletic, massive athletic league and built on defense this year. Six teams in the top 25 defensive efficiencies leads the nation. The Big 12 has four. The Big 10 has four. The SEC with six. Five point ball game. Eight on the shot clock and pressure from Roberts out top. Reeves is going to have to shoot it with two. Fires it up. No good. Shibway in traffic has it. Up with it and a foul. Ready? Oh Finish your sentence first. I say, boy, he, he finds the ball and the ball finds his hands, and there's a lot of others trying to do the same thing. You know, you know why though? Because the drive's going down the right side, and Shibway runs to the left side. You say, well, that's simple. Watch, watch a lot of big guys. It's follow the ball or run to the same side of the rim. Not Shibway, man. He's constantly fighting for those backside boards. Bridges picks up his fourth foul as Shibway's first free throw is good. He's done a Decent job at the line tonight. He's 8 of 10. He's got 28 points and 17 rebounds. His career high is 30 points, Jimmy. I said in the first half he was tracking a 32 point and 20 rebound game. And he's he's right there. Can never lose your edge as a team or as a player. I don't think Oscar maybe lost it a little bit. And Cal called him on it. And this big cat has responded. He's got 29. That's a season high. I talked to Cal Saturday night after the, his win at Tennessee on the phone on the drive to Atlanta after my Alabama game. He was so happy for his kids and a celebration that they, they believe 100% in John Calipari as their head coach. Moncrief spin wow. move. Whoa! Wow. What a Double block wow. by Toppin. Moncrief exploded to the basket and Toppin matched him. <laughs> you just talked about the athleticism. That's it. There it is. You don't find dudes like that in other leagues. Cal's oh my get gosh. Stuck Joe Lindsay just called Calipari for being out of the box. This will take some separation. And Toppin and Frederick are the first two over there to keep him where he is. He got the warning in the first half. Well, that was an interesting one, Jim. He's he's on the three-point line. That's you have to make the call if you're Joe Lindsay. Roberts missed the free throw. Stays a seven-point lead. Toppin off the side of the backboard on a contested shot. Not a good trip down the floor for Kentucky. Good job by Anselm to get inside of Shibway on that backside. Roberts sets an extra step. But the call is on the floor. Foul on Toppin. It's been a rough night for Lindsey Short and Hartness, the three officials here at Rupp Arena. Yeah, hard game to call. The athletes and the quickness on the floor. And there's the contact before the travel. Again, it's the right call, not a popular call in Rupp. This kid has a fallible game, Terry Roberts does. He averages right at eight free throw attempts per game. Now they've made a living, Jimmy, from the free throw yeah. line all season, and tonight they've now missed six. Mm. The lead is seven. They've missed six free throws. Reeves. Too strong. Look at Oscar Shabway, and he will get fouled. This is as assertive as we've seen Oscar this year, and we've seen a lot of Oscar Shibwe. Yeah, he is a man on a mission right now in Rupp Arena. And he called out his team last week, 
saying to Coach Cal, put the walk-ons in if guys don't want to fight. Now, has he been perfect? Absolutely not. He's been a disaster as a ball screen defender up until tonight. But he has certainly sent a message to his teammates and to this crowd. Kentucky is not dead yet. After his 30th point of the night to go with 19 rebounds. And he's been very good from the free throw line, making 9 of 11 shots. So uncommon for a massive guy like he is with tremendous strength to have such soft paws. I mean, even on that one, I think he tipped it to himself first a little bit. But his body control, his soft paws, and that just brute strength. You're trying to move a refrigerator. Impossible. 6'9", 260. Too strong with the second one. So he sits there with 30 points, 19 rebounds for 30. Matches a career high. Eight-point lead. And a Quindo threw one up wildly, and there's your 30 and 20 for Oscar Shibway. Rebound number 20. Just a hard shot by Oquindo. You're trying to drive the first side of the floor. Get Kentucky to defensive rotation if you're Georgia right now and have a little patience. Floppy Frederick action. open three short. Good floppy action by Frederick. The ones you got to make. Oh, oh my, my goodness. Gosh. Aquindo explodes. I'm telling you, there are plays made in this league that you don't see in the ACC, the Big Ten, or the Big 12. Athletes everywhere. Yeah, that was a bit of a fake. Aquindo looked like he was going with Wallace just laid it up. You're waiting for a big dunk. Instead, a finger roll and a blow by on the offensive end. Not good defense from Georgia. A team that has made tremendous strides last year, number 318 in the country defensively, now in the top 60. They got to dig in. They need stops. Georgia does right now. Eight point advantage for the Wildcats. Four and a half to go. And Aquindo spins again, throws it up. They call that on Reeves. Yeah, they did. Boy, Aquindo looked like he was going to go with his left hand and lay it off the glass. That explosiveness. Nope. <laughs> his leg strength, his, his calves literally are bigger than my thighs. Just an explosive mm. athletic guy that has gone from a 26% three-point shooter last year, now in the mid-30s, has more of a complete game. And Georgia needs every free throw attempt right now to drop. Reeves, third foul. Oh, my goodness. What a wow. difference yeah. for Georgia tonight. They had been a terrific free throw shooting team coming in about 75%. And it has hurt them tonight. 5 of 11 in the second half. Great action at Rupp Arena on this Super Tuesday. Kansas State knocked Kansas off earlier. Georgia trying to do the same on the floor of Kentucky. This will be a top and touch at some point against this zone. He can screen it, he can flash, but he's the playmaker inside that zone. There it, it is. up to Wallace three on the kick from Toppin and they're going to keep it here. Oscar ended up with it in his hands. So he grabbed the rebound even though there was a foul on Jabri Abdul Rahim. Just literally moves people out of the way legally to Shibwe. His eyes are always tracking the ball but his feet are always going towards the rim. And there's no contact that can keep this guy from getting to the front. Thirty one points and a new career high college Hoop quadruple header Saturday ESPN. We got these two games to kick things off Isaiah Wong Jim Laranega the Miami Hurricanes 17th in the country taking on an unranked Duke team and then A&M and I know you're high on A&M they've won six in a row into tonight taking on Kentucky. That's a huge day of hoops on Saturday. Those are the first two of a quadruple header Rabbi, that A&M team is playing like they did last year in the SEC tournament. They are feisty bunch of guys defensively. Wade Taylor's a terrific guard. They could bring a seven game win streak in here if they beat Florida tomorrow night. That will be a, a major, major matchup in this league Saturday afternoon. Under Raheem, three, too strong. 
And Toppin went up sky high to rip down another rebound. Jacob Toppin now in double digits. He's got 11 rebounds. Good challenge by Kentucky to get out to a 6'8 shooter that can make guarded shots. And Cal will work this play clock, play clock down. It's a big trip here. They're up eight, three and a half to go. Now 320. Just running Frederick off floppy action. Every team runs it. Here comes a double pass it. Get it out of there. Toppin, yeah, that's going to be a foul on a Quindo as Toppin got wiped out in the paint. We'll take a timeout. Three minutes, 15 seconds to go. It's Kentucky off that Tennessee win. Trying to do it again tonight. Van Pelt getting set for Sports Center. Very busy show on the way. Key moments of an overtime thriller between Kansas and Kansas State. Jerome Tang is going to join the show. Also, Warriors GF. Bob Myers in studio. We got the bad beats. My guy Stanford Steve alongside. Carl, Jimmy, back to you and Rupp. See if Kentucky can finish this one off. All right, Scotty, thank you very much. Look forward to the program. And he's right, a lot of great college basketball and the rest of the world of sports. Jimmy Dykes, Carl Ravitch, Marty Smith back. That's why the game is special. Marty's back with us, Jimmy, here on a Super Tuesday. will be with us the rest of the way. The band is back together. I am just waiting on my invitation to hop in first class on Jimmy's jet, <laughs> go wherever I want to. You know, you can't hide money. <laughs> and Jimmy's jet, I mean, look, Dykes has all the paper. You're buying dinner tonight. Well, I guess it's midnight. Yeah. So yeah our midnight snack is on you, Jack. He's threatened a Waffle House run for us. Let's go. We'll see Trevor Lawrence there. <laughs> yeah, we will. Stand, Roberts standing in the eye of the storm and deliver what that cat did. Yeah, they're going to check this. It looked like there was some elbows there. Wallace may have taken one off the mouth. Keep an eye on Braylon Bridges. They get locked up there. Yeah, there's the possible a hook and hold hook there. And hold. F1 when that elbow rises up to contact right there on Case and Wallace. There's a lot going on. Two guys dancing in the lane. And Bridges is trying to hold off, but he gets that elbow up into the neck area of Case and Wallace. Is one thing you're going to be looking at in the possible hook and hold. That's how Zach Eady gets defended every time for Purdue, by the way. He gets fouled every single possession. I call him Shaq Eady because that's who he is in the college game, the leading candidate for the National Player of the Year against Michigan State. Well, Matt Panter called a terrific play yesterday yeah. in that game against Michigan State. And Zach Eady basically got it in the paint and threw the ball <laughs> down into the net. It wasn't even a dunk. He just dropped it in the net. Simple play, right? Run the block, post up, catch it, turn and score. And there's no answer defensively for Zach Eady. Those freshman guards are good, but the reason why they're good is because they're playing with a guy that's different than everybody else in the college game. Like Joe and Owen Short have come up with their solution. Joe Lenardi, of course, gets more and more popular as we move towards March and his bracketology, Jimmy. This was a league that at one point had maybe seven teams that were projected to get into the tournament. Right now, there are five. Kentucky is on the first four outline. And a win tonight, according to Joe, would move them into the field. And obviously, there's a whole bunch of season left, Jimmy. But Kentucky in an odd position at this point in the season as a first four out. Yeah, and they were even within reach of my jet prior to that win at Tennessee. It's going to be a common foul on Casey Wallace, 22 in white, and nothing escalated above that. An absolute must makes right now by Braylon Bridges. He's six for six, and now he's six for seven. And that one really didn't have a chance. He didn't get up over the win. Rim, I should say. Shibway Jimmy's got a career high 30. Three times he did it last year. The last player in the SEC that have a 30 and 20 game was Sidarius Thornwall with South Carolina. Wow. It's been a while. And he went for 44 and 21 <laughs> in that game. <laughs> I said he was tracking 32 and 20 the way Georgia was covering him. And Shibway saw the same thing. 31 and 21. Georgia goes into a press here. 
with 2.50 to go. Normally it's a tempo press. That time is a little bit more aggressive. See if Wallace would cough one up. Wallace pulls up. That's too strong. And a quick shot. There's a steal by Reeves. Sheboy, watch out. And a foul. Those five guys right there in that huddle for Kentucky. That's Kentucky's team going forward, in my opinion. Defensively, they're big, they're physical, they're playing well together. Reeves just anticipates, gets his eyes back instead of turning blindly and running. A really smart play by Reeves on the cutback for the interception. A rare miss tonight for a guy that's done everything right, Oscar Shibwe. 33 points, 21 rebounds. And a 10-point Kentucky lead with two and a half to go. Hill to Holt on the baseline. Now in the paint. Fires up a shot. Shibwe, 22nd rebound. Ravi Wallace has done a really good job in the second yes, half. He has. Staying in front of Robert. Sure has. You're asking a lot from a true freshman to take on a guy that's played four years of college ball that's phenomenal getting downhill. And Wallace has one more than he's lost in the second half. And you mentioned the five. Frederick's still on the floor. How about a night in which C.J. Frederick yeah. is one of eight? And Oscar's having a real good time tonight. A lot more smiles on his face than we've seen most of the season. But, Ravi, the threat of Reeves on one side of the floor and sure. Frederick on the other. Now you got isolation on the in inside for Shibwe. And Kentucky has made Georgia pay with that single coverage tonight. As Kentucky found their groove. Took a huge step in Knoxville on Saturday. Two minutes away from another big one tonight. Before a and rolls in here on Saturday. And a week from Saturday, the Kansas Jayhawks come in here. A chance for Kentucky to make another national statement. Toppin is near a double-double with nine points and 11 rebounds. But a night of nights for Oscar Shibwe. He continues to add to his career high. 35 points, 22 rebounds. A massive effort for last year's player of the year in the country. Roberts, no finger roll. That time Shibwe was there to bother him. You and I are impressed with Georgia. Those two guards are a handful. De defensively, they fight. Not enough juice tonight to win in Rupp Arena. Kentucky had a lot of answers because this thing was not going their direction in the first half. But they found some answers. Wallace has been tremendous in the second half running that point. Hill all the way to the bucket, lays it up over the rim, and Mike White will quickly call a timeout. Ravi Wallace with 14 points in this ball game. And he shot a good percentage, six out of 10, I think, from the floor. And only one turnover in all of his minutes that he's played, 27 minutes. He stuck a three in the first half. At the end of the first half, he's attacked that middle third off ball screen action. But he's just played under control. He's made smart, tough, physical plays. And his defense on Roberts, which is not in his package, Cal, I'm sure, will talk a lot about it because Roberts was owning this game on the road. And you have to have someone at halftime that says, who wants a piece of Roberts? And right. Casey Wallace is the guy that said, Coach, let me have a shot at him. Well done by the former McDonald's All-American. If there's a caveat to the South Carolina loss, it was Toppin didn't play against South Carolina with a right shoulder injury. Remember, Wallace left that game with back spasms. So the five guys that are on the floor that you say are going to be there moving forward, well, two of them missed, one of them missed the entire game, yeah. and another one missed a chunk of the game. And this is Wallace coming off a game in which he played 22 minutes against Tennessee and was 0 for 3 at six assists. Well, Shibwe has his edge back, and Frederick is the vocal leader of this team. You got the athleticism of Toppin, and Kentucky has found their groove. I'm not saying to say that they're going to take down Alabama and win the SEC title, but they're going to work their way into that top three or four and get in that NCAA tournament if they continue. 
Roberts is unfortunately the guy that has to foul Wallace. And that's the fourth on Roberts. Well, Kentucky has worked a lot, Jimmy, on their free throw shooting. You know, there were years here where that was uh, an Achilles heel for them. They just couldn't make their free throws a long time ago under Calipari. And this year, that was an issue. They've definitely gotten better. They were terrific against Tennessee, and they're making their free throws again tonight. Now 21 of 27, about 77%. Well, there's that schedule I mentioned. The A&M is going to be a very difficult game. I'm telling you, they... They have the ability to kind of force you into the game that they want to play. They scramble you up defensively. Will they have an answer for Shibwe? I, I don't know, because Georgia certainly has not. What a statement by Shibwe. Not only for him, but for this Kentucky team. Foul and the bucket. Reeves makes a mistake, fouling the shooter right at the bucket. 37 and 24 for wow. Oscar Shibwe. Uh, yes, I just I sense Cal was coaching with a lot more confidence at Tennessee today in the shoot around and tonight he's back on his guys in the right way. He's not soft paddling anything. He's not sugarcoating anything. He's addressing it man to man and the accountability for this Kentucky program is right back where it needs to be. Cal said don't panic. I've been here before the right buttons have been pushed. Last Tuesday when we were here, yeah. it was a disaster. It was. There's a foul there. I mean, there are five guys, Jimmy. Think about Toppin. You mentioned Frederick, Reeves, Wallace, and Shibwe, all with 26 or more minutes. Then it's Livingston. Wheeler got 11. His, his role has been dramatically reduced here recently. He, too, was banged up, missed a game recently. But Wallace is seemingly the primary point guard going forward. And again, Frederick has made one shot tonight. And it looks like they're going to win this game going away against Georgia. And as to your point, you know there are going to be games in which Frederick, you know, makes six of six yes. to 12 from three. Reeves goes to the bench. Calipari gives him a hand. Toppin now a double-double. And the ball on the floor, and who picks it up? Shibwe, and then he lost it, and now he deflects it to his teammate. Mike White puts his hands up. We're down 12 with a minute to go. Let's just run it out. Hey, Mike White's very impressive, Jimmy, with what he's done in a very short period of time in a culture change in Georgia. Yeah, he's got his kids believing. They're fighting defensively. What he did in the transfer portal to sell himself and sell the vision. But Kentucky just too much tonight, putting 85 on the board. Last two ball games, when Georgia comes in, Ravi, they've given up about 55, 56 points a game. Kentucky too much strength. All about Oscar Shibwe, who points at the crowd. 34 and white, played like the national player of the year tonight. He sure did. In the end, Shibwe is going to end up with a monster night. 37 points, 24 rebounds. And Kentucky, which trailed by 11 in the first half, caps off its biggest comeback of the season and win it 85-71. Don't forget our Saturday quadruple header. Scott Van Pelt Show is coming up next. Great to have Marty Smith back. Derek Mobley also returns the director after a terrific, terrific college football season. For my buddy Jimmy Dykes, I'm Carl Ravitch. We're off to the Waffle House. 85-71, Kentucky a winner. Not one thing wrong with a Waffle House. I'd go if there was one near here. Welcome to the Sports Center from the nation's capital. I'm Scott Van Pelt. Kansas State takes down Kansas.